Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily or at mhughesart. So today I really wanted to test out this Daniel Smith watercolor ground because I love painting with watercolors and I would love to be able to use them in my sketchbooks, my normal sketchbooks. I also wanted to see if this would allow me to do watercolor paintings on canvas. So you'll see me prep my sketchbook and also a little canvas panel. So the sketchbook that I prepped is my moleskin that I'm using for the 100 painted heads challenge that I've been doing because I thought, you know, let's, let's get some watercolor heads in there and work our way through those 100 portraits. I thought it would be a good way to compare how the ground acts on paper versus canvas and how the watercolors sort of sit on those surfaces. You can see here I have this little travel watercolor palette. You can see a stamp there that says Redwood Willows and that's because I bought a little watercolor set from them and they were lovely. But since then I've kept a few of those colors in here and I've also added my own. I wanted to add these two new watercolor pans I got, one in a lovely lilac color and one in a lavender color. And these two new paints are the St. Petersburg White Knights watercolors. These are just colors that are right up my alley and I thought it would be a fun addition to my little palette. I will try to link them down below for you guys if you're interested. This travel palette is really a amalgamation of a bunch of different brands as well as some pans that I filled myself with I think Windsor and Newton watercolors. I've just been adding and subtracting pans in here trying to trying to get the perfect little palette for myself. So I'm going to use those today. I do bring out my big my big bad boy palette later on because I felt like I wanted a little more color selection, but for the most part, I do use this little guy. Okay, so I decided to start with the watercolor portraits in my sketchbook for the 100 painted heads challenge. You'll see me do a little watercolor on canvas painting a little later on, but I wanted to use these heads as a little bit of a warm up. Okay, I have a lot to say about <laughs> about this. First of all, I want to say that watercolor is not one of my main mediums. Though I wish it was, I do struggle with it and I tend to take long breaks away from watercolor and then when I pick it up again, it feels so foreign to me. The time I felt the most confident with watercolors was when I was taking a watercolor class at school a couple years ago and it was just a really great class and I learned so much. Now I just feel so rusty, I think I took too long of a break. Yeah, I have this thing where I want to be not only comfortable with all mediums, or most mediums, but I want to be really good at them. And I don't know what it is in my personality that makes me like this. I have a lot of hobbies. What's the saying if you're... I think they say if you are a jack of all trades, you are a master of none. <laughs> I often feel I run the risk of, of that because I just want to do everything. <laughs> so I wanted to keep these portraits very loose. I wanted to try a different style than I have with watercolors in the past. If you go back on my channel, I have a watercolor video where I do a fairly realistic portrait. I will link it in the cards if you're interested, but I wanted to do something totally different and just be really loose with it here especially with these two smaller heads on the bottom of the page. So my first impressions of the watercolor ground on the sketchbook paper is that it handles very well, I think. I mean, the pages don't curl up. The watercolor, I think, as you know, a non-watercolor expert, sits quite nicely. I did notice that the watercolor would pool in any sort of brush strokes of the ground, so you really have to be careful to get a nice even coating, which I don't think I did. 
possibly you could do a couple coats of the watercolor ground and then sand it. I think that would be okay. I also noticed a little fuzz or dog hair got stuck in the watercolor ground and that was kind of annoying because the watercolor just sits around that spot and makes it so noticeable. Whereas with an oil painting, you can kind of get away with a few, a few little hairs in there. <laughs> so the reference I chose for the top portrait, the bigger portrait, I don't think it was the best reference. It's a really cool photograph. I found it on Pinterest, but the model has a blue shadow across the bottom of her face and a really dark, almost semicircle shadow on the top of her head. So with the watercolor painting, it just doesn't, it just looks weird. <laughs> it kind of looks like she has a beard or a five o'clock shadow. I didn't give up though probably pushed it a little too far but I think it ended up looking okay. These two bottom portraits I wanted to really play with color especially using those two new colors I got the lavender and the lilac and I wanted them to be very loose and I wanted to use the wet on wet techniques. There is a artist on Instagram called MC Montgomery and they do watercolor portraits in their sketchbook a lot that are very loose and usually monochromatic. So I was definitely inspired by those. You can probably already see in this top portrait how I'm really, I'm really just painting a beard on her right now. It's not good, guys. <laughs> but that is what this 100 heads challenge is for. They're not all going to be amazing. Most of them are going to be busts. That's the, the whole point, you know, if you make 100 bowls in a pottery class, one of them is probably going to turn out pretty, pretty good or pretty close to perfect, hopefully. And uh, that's better than making one not so great bowl. I do promise it starts to look less beard-like as the portrait progresses. I promise you this. I could see how a professional watercolorist or just somebody that, you know, watercolor is their main medium that maybe watercolor ground wouldn't feel super nice to them. But uh, because watercolor isn't my main medium, I thought it was pretty nice. And I'm definitely going to use it in my sketchbook a whole, a whole bunch because I think it adds something fun when I want to try something different, put some color down. There were certain areas where I kind of liked the look of the watercolor sitting in the brush strokes of the ground. I think, you know, an artist better than I could probably do something really cool with that effect. But you guys can let me know what you think if you've tried watercolor ground. There are multiple brands that make the product, so I can't really say how others act but I thought the Daniel Smith one was pretty good. I chose it because it's a reputable watercolor brand. I thought it was the safest bet. <laughs> but 
but if any of you have any experience with a different brand or you know if you've tried the same product and you hate it tell me about it i would love to know So here I am going into the canvas painting. I decided to do a little eye painting and it was so much fun. I haven't done something like this in a while and yeah, it was really cool to paint with watercolor on canvas. It's, it felt wrong, but it was very interesting. And I think I did two coats on this one and you have to let it dry for 24 to 48 hours. So that is something to consider. But I wonder if I did more coats and if I did that sanding technique, if it would be a totally different outcome. Because as it was with the two coats that I did, some of my watercolors, especially the more granulating ones, would really show off the weave of the canvas. And I wasn't really sure that I liked it. Usually for the most part, it would go away once the watercolor dried and I did have a hair dryer with me so I could dry it as I went and uh, so when I got scared if I was like oh, oh that looks awful I would pull out the hair dryer and usually it wasn't so bad but yeah definitely those granulating watercolors acted a little bit differently than than the other ones I also found that layering was a little bit more difficult than it normally is on watercolor paper. It really picks up the paint underneath more than I find it does on watercolor paper. I really like to layer in my watercolor paintings and mix colors that way. I love how, you know, the light shines through those two translucent layers of paint and you see that beautiful mixed color. I just I just love it. <laughs> so that was a little bit of a bummer that sometimes I couldn't get that look as much, but that's okay. I still like this little painting. I started with mostly my translucent watercolors and towards the end I did use those two new White Knight paints and those guys are a more opaque watercolor, almost, almost a little gouache and I did like how those looked on top of the translucent effects of my other watercolors. So I don't have too much else to say about the watercolor ground or about these pieces, but I do want to say that my final thoughts are that for sketchbook painting, I like it and I'm probably going to keep using it. I don't know if I'm going to use it on canvas again even though I did really like the look so maybe I'm lying. I think it could be cool to do a watercolor base and then oil paint on top. I think in theory that should work because you can do oil based paints on top of water based paints but not the other way around so that could be interesting maybe. But uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed the video. I do also want to say thank you so much for everyone who has subscribed and who's been commenting. Everybody is so kind and I really appreciate it. I think there's sometimes a lack of kindness these days and it really warms my heart how nice everybody is. So thank you so much for watching. There are more art videos coming very soon. Please feel free to leave video suggestions down below. Have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. See you very soon. Bye.